everyone. everyone. This is Anna and Anna, and we're Geeks, Geeks Uncensored. Uncensored, and we're here streaming from BAM.TV's offices in San Francisco. And today we have Sean, the co-founder of AppMaker, and Chris, the co-founder of Startup Digest. So we're, I think we're gonna start up off with our uh, Russian word of the day or the week, right? Russian word of the oh, week or yeah. the day or whatever Sorry. it is. So when is that all of you? That means you're welcome. Yes. So if you say, you know, uh, if you do something for somebody and they say, thanks. Nostarovia. Yes, So Nostarovia. I think we did Spasiba a couple of weeks ago. Yes. So Nostarovia was kind of We'll go with that, yeah. Spasiba and then Nostarovia. Yeah. You're welcome. Nostarovia. Nostarovia. Good job. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. <laughs> that is the Russian word yes. of the day. So why don't you very quickly tell us about your company before we start And yourself as well, how yeah. you got involved and... Okay, well... Uh, AppMaker is a self-service automated system to help you build mobile applications. Um, the idea, it's a free service, so the idea was to kind of break uh, the barriers that people had to get their content out on the mobile device, which is a really good way to connect to customers, users all over the world. And having that, uh, having, having that have a roadblock because of cost is just a little unfair, so we wanted to break that boundary. I started as a uh, in computer science and philosophy in college, and uh, did a lot of work in DC in government, decided that I kind of got tired of that, moved to San Francisco, did some startups, met my co-founders, started AppMaker. Exactly. So just run through something? Yeah, so let's see it in action. All right, well, uh, this is an AppMaker after you log in. Like I said, registration is free. Um, so once you log in, we have a couple apps here that we've made before, um, but what we did is we went ahead and made a Geeks Uncensored app. Yay! Yay! We're really excited, excited about it. Yeah, so that thank should be you up so in much. no time, no worries. Um, and anyone can do this themselves, but just to, to show you a little bit about the process here, um, they enter the title, that'll be the display name. You can choose from images from or, or upload your own image. As you can see, we made them a little image at the top. Um, it comes with a bunch of different feeds and, and, uh, and photos. We also have a P, uh, HTML view, which we don't show in the simulator just yet, but I'll hopefully be able to show you an example of what that means on the phone. Um, the person could add all those feeds I just talked about or content. Like I said, it's not just feed based. You have a bunch of different views you can use, as well as the ability to make a completely custom view with HTML or PhoneGap, which is, uh, allows you to communicate with the device beyond what Safari can do. And uh, you have the ability to change colors and whatnot. What we really try to focus on is really making a really simple way to get the information out instead of having a lot of whiz bang kind of things going on. It's, it's what your purpose is, is that you have great content and the world should know. So. Trying to make something more than what it is is probably just going to complicate things and you might as well become a developer again. So um, we have the ability to monetize, so if Geeks on Center want to put some ads up, we don't get in the middle of that. Make money is one of our, uh, you making money is one of our principles, so we want to make that possible. And you can see ad mob media lets, custom HTML tags, so you can put up banners to books or other web pages at the bottom. And lastly is the publish tab. Now this is something that is pretty rare, but because we've published over 3,000 apps, we have the ability to know what Apple will more likely or less likely reject, so we kind of give you an idea of how likely you're going to be t approved. And um, if it goes too low, we actually don't let you publish. That's something that we talked over with Apple, and they like that because we don't want to put a bunch of crappy apps in the <laughs> <laughs> finding my words. Well, that makes sense. Yeah, in the store. And as you can see, I just press create, and it goes to the build page, and our build servers just take over the rest. It queues it up. We have this product called App Drop. So before developers might know, will know this, but non-developers may not. When you make a test app, you actually have to put it on your phone using iTunes, drag it over, copy provisionals. It's kind of laborious, but with AppDrop, which you just came out with a month ago, you can just send an email link and install it directly on your phone with just one single click. So there's no syncing, no cables, or anything like that in order to get something tested and reviewed. So this is what the final product looks like from just those few minutes. We've made some changes since I guess I built this, but you can see we have feeds there, um, Twitter feeds, and whatnot. Here's an awesome picture, the famous picture. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> and as you can and the, to give you an example of what the phone gap HTML view can do, this is actually made with uh, AppMaker as well. And uh, you can see here, this is completely custom. It goes beyond just feeds. We can rotate the car. We can change colors of what the car has. And this is a great opportunity for people to promote something that they have, put some ads up, um, and or just display content in a really interesting way. The end. Well, cool. Fiend. That's awesome. And yeah. we're really excited about our app. And how long does it usually take to get the app into the Apple Store? 
Well, that's really up to Apple. So um, the process can take approximately two, two days to two weeks, depending on how much they like you or how many lunch breaks they're going on. What's the difference between making iPhone apps and Android apps? Like? Yeah, yeah, we actually have a beta list. So if you go to appmaker.com, um, check out our beta list. We actually have Android out for those users. Oh. Um, and we have Windows Mobile 7 coming soon. It's really funny the way that it broke down. iPhone is ex extremely strict, and, and therefore they have a lot of really good quality apps in their app store, which is like making Walmart, them so popular. Right? Yeah, Walmart, yeah. a lot of them. <laughs> And so the, the first step, uh, the, the first side is that heavy certificates, they really look over the content, they look over what it does, they make sure it doesn't have anything wrong with it, and then they publish. Android is very much more um, user monitored. So you upload your app, and then if a ton of people reject it or say something's wrong with it, then they'll take it down. There's not as much certification. And then Windows Mobile 7 is the middle of the two. They, they don't certify strongly, but they only monitor for things like porn and viruses. Just from making Facebook apps for so long, there's been uh, so many interesting use cases for like social media, now mobile technology, and it's really just cool to see you know brands and individuals really kind of get into the nitty gritty and yeah. reach out to their audiences in you know different channels. Well, it's, yeah. a, it's an amazing connection. I mean, you you literally are, are just have that so much more intimacy than you did. Oh well, yeah, the you're like glued. Most people are glued to their phones. Yeah. <laughs> they say yeah. they, like seventy percent of people sleep with their phone, either in the bed next to them or on. So. Oh, do you guys wow. do that? What about you? I think I sleep with my phone. I, okay. <laughs> I sleep with my phone. <laughs> <laughs> so do I. We're, we're guilty of that. Yeah. No, and then I had a question too. What What about monetizing your app? Should you charge for your app or should it be free? You know, it's I guess should is always a tough word. I mean, yeah. you what you should do is do the best thing for your company or your brand. If you have really premium content, that like I said, the age of content is back. So if you have something that you think someone would pay a dollar for, then charge them a dollar. Don't, don't think about putting ads on something that doesn't bring value. If you can make five dollars, make five dollars. If someone's willing to pay it, they're willing to yeah. pay it. Speaking of iPhone apps, does uh, Startup Digest have one? We don't. Oh, well, you. They will soon. You guys yeah. should connect. Actually, it's a great. So. You guys use emails, right? So yeah. Posturus does an email RSS system, so you can convert all of your emails systems to the phone and then charge monthly on a subscription <laughs> using AppMaker. Hmm. Okay. Look, uh, do yeah, there you go. Yes. I owe you two percent. I owe you two percent. Yes, score making money. I love it. No, we're super excited about our Geeks and Censored app. So thank you so much for putting that together for us. Sure. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it's it. going to be a good Christmas uh, yeah. gift for nice. people to nice. get themselves, right? And yeah. I'm not sure if we're going to charge. It's probably going to be free. At yeah, first, I think. You know? Yeah, I, I'm all for making the app free and um, sharing some of our new exclusive uh, yeah. photo shoots with our. Adoring fans. Adoring, adoring fans. fans. I don't think we have any of those yet, but I don't know. <laughs> Maybe, I hope. Anyways. So, so, Chris, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and yeah. how you got started with Founder Startup. So, yeah, I graduated from this college called Cal Poly San Luis Obispo in June of 2009. Uh, while I was at college, uh, I was kind of running our, we had an engineering competition, business plan competition, and I started an incubator. But oh, Cal really? That's pretty freaking cool. Yeah, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, the entire county is 40,000 people. It's very small. Yeah. Very tiny school on the central coast of California. So I was doing a lot of stuff there, but when I graduated, I wanted to be in a bigger city. So I yeah. moved up to Silicon Valley. Okay. Uh, and that was kind of, you know, when I first came here about a year and a half ago. So okay. essentially when I moved here, all my family and friends were mostly down in LA or the central coast okay. of California. So when I moved up here, I didn't, I didn't really know anybody, no friends, no family, all that good stuff. So uh, I was going to events really just to meet people, kind of get connected all, and all that good stuff. And I didn't have any friends, so I didn't have anything to freaking do. Yeah. <laughs> so I was going to all these events. And the problem with Silicon Valley is there's so many events. It's really hard to know what to go to, what's actually quality and what's not. Yeah. So I started making this digest for myself. <laughs> like, really, more just like digest. Yeah. Um, and I was doing this for a while, and then I was working for this like investment fund incubator, and some of my friends there were like, hey, this is really cool. Do you want to send this to me too? Yeah. So in November of 2009, we sent one email to 22 people, and that's kind of how it started. Wow, that's mm -hmm. awesome. So now we went from that original 22 subscribers to now we have about 85,000 subscribers we're sending this to oh, every wow. single week. And it's broken up in 57 different cities, okay. international and national. So we reach places like Tokyo and Paris and New York City and Cape Town, South Africa and wow. LA and all over. Wow. Uh, and all of it's essentially the same thing. It's featuring the best events in all these areas and kind of pulling together the startup industry mm -hmm. through these kind of like networking, physical activities and more information. Not news, not analysis, but media information. So what about, can you tell us what best, how, how do you determine a good event? Like how do you pick an event to go to? Because there are so many, what do you look for in a good event? 
Yeah, so keep in mind, so in all the cities, like, for example, I would never know what's going on in Paris on a weekly basis. <laughs> so, like, it's kind of impossible for me to do it. So in every city, we have a curator, a startup founder themselves, mm. and they're the ones that pick the best events in the area. And the benefit they get out is because it's all email-based, the email comes out in their name. Oh, that's kind of that's interesting. Really cool. So what do, you do, what do you do when there's like a high competitiveness? Like in this area, there must be a bunch of startups that want to write something. How do you pick the person? There's a lot of people that... The um, curator. Yeah. I yeah. So, so to be a curator, you have to be a startup founder, an investor, or a cash out entrepreneur living in the city that you're in actually doing something. Mm -hmm. You have to be doing something kind of cool and you have to be doing it for kind of the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we kind of have like an internal process where people kind of apply and we kind of go through them. And it's almost, it's kind of like hiring someone, but it's kind of not because they're almost kind of really doing it for for themselves and kind of the personal brand, but I don't know, we try and make sure we have the right person in the area. After they do it for a while, you kind of figure yeah. out if they're right. Do you now. make people arm wrestle for it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make them rush and fight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I wonder what that is. Uh, I was going to say, I would arm wrestle for that curator. Yeah, well, I would yeah, not arm sure. wrestle you for so, that. And who, who is yeah. the main guy for you guys in San Francisco? Is it you or? Yeah, you? so the Silicon Valley one I still do.